You probably know Tesla for the Model X, the Model S, and a bunch of vanity plates that say no gas. But before all that, there was this, Tesla's first car, the Tesla Roadster. Now this Roadster comes to us from a viewer named Eric in Syracuse, New York, who sent me an email asking if I wanted to come drive his Tesla Roadster. That was pretty cool because I don't get a lot of emails from readers asking if I want to drive their Tesla Roadster. I get a lot of emails from viewers telling me that my face is too big. So I drove four and a half hours up here to check out the Roadster and take it for a spin. For more on that, click the link below to check out my column on Auto Trader Oversteer. And now, let's take a tour. But first, what is it? Now back when Tesla was a little startup, they borrowed some chassis from Lotus to make this sports car. And everybody looked at them and saw them on the street and said, oh, how cute, what a cute little car. I'm sure it'll take you a few years to fail. And now here they are. Now here to tell us about this car is Eric, who owns this particular example. Eric, uh, well, how do you like it? Uh, it's an amazing car, it drives very well. It's, it's definitely quirky and it, I wouldn't say it's a car for everyone. So what did this thing cost when it was new? Uh, so the, the performance invoice on this car was like 128.5. But you bought it used, so what did you, what did you pay for it? About 60. What yeah. kind of range do you get? Uh, you can get about 220 miles, assuming you don't go over like 55 or 60. Around town, if you're stomping on it, maybe 100. <laughs> if my battery goes dead, I'm like six hours. How long does it take if you want to just plug it into a, like a wall socket for like a toaster? Like three days. When you tell people you have a Tesla, are they excited to see your Model S and your giant center display screen? Absolutely. And then do you're like, no, no, it's not like that. So, do people know what it is when you're driving around town? Uh, around here, lots of people think it's a Lotus. Uh, I've had some people ask me if it was a Corvette, which was a little strange. <laughs> do the Lotus people ever talk to you? Most of the Lotus owners I've met have been pretty accepting of it. Like, yeah, yeah you know, we're, Lotus is actually producing things, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> have you had any problems with it? Uh, so it's stranded me uh, once. Um, that said, the, the cost of ownership hasn't been awful. Right. I figure somewhere between 1500 and two grand a year. Do you feel any sort of kinship with the Model S and the Model X people? I can't tell you how many times I've had a Model S uh, owner ask me, well, when did they start making this? <laughs> like it's something new. One of the Tesla Roadster's most interesting quirks is just how much it shares with the Lotus Elise, including the steering wheel, the climate vents, the parking brake, and the turn signal stock. Another thing it shares with the Lotus, it is very difficult to climb inside. <laughs> but there are things about the Tesla that are a lot more luxurious than in the Lotus. For example, it has a cup holder. There are also heated seats. There's traction control. An iPod connector and an automatic transmission. Now, some of my favorite quirks about this car are in the trunk. And by the way, contrary to popular belief, it does have a trunk. And actually, it's a fairly substantial one. For example, the trunk latch is from Ford, a fact that Tesla did not go to great lengths to conceal. There's also a system that cycles coolant to the battery even when the car is off in certain circumstances, so you can hear it bubbling even when you're just parked. The trunk is also where you access the battery, which contains my favorite warning label that I've ever seen on a car. Here's another interesting quirk about this car. It has a completely different charging system than the Model S and Model X. For one thing, it cannot be supercharged at the Tesla superchargers. Also, it has a completely different charge port than both the Model S and Model X and a regular electric car like the Nissan Leaf, completely separate. So, if you want to charge this car on a Model S or a Model X charging station, you need an adapter. If you want to charge this car on a Nissan Leaf charging station, you need an adapter. These adapters are not manufactured by Tesla. They're made by some guy in Vermont who is a lifesaver to Roadster owners. And then there are the door handles. Now the standard door handles are these slick little electronic things. You pull them in the door open. It's pretty simple. But you will notice that there is no keyhole on the exterior of the car. So how do you open the car if the electronic fails or if the battery in the key fob dies? Fortunately, Tesla thought of this and they devised a solution, although it isn't a very graceful one. Huh? It also features the world's smallest touchscreen, 
although it's surprisingly useful. Right now we're in performance mode. If you tap the battery icon, you can switch it into normal mode. We can also scroll through and see like the temperatures of the various different components. Ah, uh, the clock, who cares. Uh, we've got acceleration, uh, power and torque numbers, which it'll sample live and display for you. So there's the tour. Now it's time for a drive. All right, here we go. Woo! <laughs> wow. Sorry, right, I'm going I'm to push it again. It's got that feeling you get right before you're about to lift off when you're on a mm -hmm. jetliner and you're looking out the window. The thing about the making no sound is that it could almost get you in trouble. It's like, well, I'm not making any sound. I don't know where yeah. my limits are, you know? You do, it has to be all visual. You do develop a feel for it. Yeah. The ride doesn't strike me as that bad. I feel like the Lotus rode harder. Oh. It's weighted differently than the Lotus, for sure. For one thing, it weighs a thousand pounds more. Oh, right. Yeah. Brakes. Boy, the brakes don't do anything additional unless you're really deep into the yep. pedal. The seat is a lot more comfortable than the Lotus. That helps. Mm -hmm. um, it is, I mean, you are a little bit constrained movement-wise. Yeah. You can see we're, what, we're you know, we're like, <laughs> right? The pedals are real small. It's hard to get both of my feet in there. The acceleration is massive. I'm blown away by how crazy it is. I never knew they were this fast. So there you have it. You knew about the Model S, you knew about the Model X, and now you know about the mysterious original Tesla, which may just be the coolest and most exciting of them all. For more of my thoughts, check out my column on Auto Trader Oversteer by clicking the link below.